know. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear us okay? Yes, I can. Very good. Okay. Go ahead and raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide is true and accurate? I do. Thank you, Mr. Jordy. Thank you. Uh, can you please state your name? I am Kathleen Hunt. And Ms. Hunt, do you own uh, four uh, individual separate parcels located in Hardin County, Iowa that are targeted by the summit proposed hazardous pipeline? I do. And um, is that a true and accurate representation on the screen there of those parcels? Yes. And ma'am, did you cause to be filed in this docket what's known as pre-filed testimony with questions and answers as well as some attachments and exhibits? I did indeed. And other than perhaps some uh, minor clerical errors, if we were to go through those questions and answers here with you today, would the answers you provided in writing be substantially similar to what you would provide us today? Yes. Uh, there was one thing I, I wasn't sure that was in there originally about the Hardin County Soil and Water Commission, uh, that they had an easement. I'm not sure if that's in there or not. Okay, so my next question was going to be if you had any material um, updates or corrections. And so if that easement of Hardin County was missing before you'd like to correct that and let the board know there is the existence of such an easement? Yes, please. All right, very good. And I guess, uh, do you know where on your ground that easement is? I'm not exactly sure, but I uh, believe it's near where the, the creek is and where I have two bioreactors, which is what it's for is for them accessing the um, nitrifying bioreactors that were put in place last year. All right, very good. I, at this time, on Ms. Hunt's behalf, will offer landowner exhibit 230, 231, 232, and 301. Are there objections? Uh, just to clarify, that's the pre-filed testimony and pre-filed exhibits 1 through 23. Let's see, I think I gave one wrong number there. Let me double check, 230. Yes, yeah, so 230, 231, 232 are the exhibits. No objection. Seeing no objection, the board will admit, give the way due. Thank you. Uh, and ma'am, at this time, some other folks might have questions for you, okay? Yes, Thank great. You. Mr. Taylor? Thank you. Uh, ma'am, I'm Wally Taylor. I represent the Sierra Club. And um, first of all, this uh, easement that you've mentioned, the Hardin County Soil and Water the District has that? Yes. And, uh, Go ahead. Yes. Uh, they have an easement to access my bioreactors that we put in place for uh, helping to uh, water purification and the runoff into the creek. Okay. What are these bioreactors in relation to the Summit Pipeline route? Well, that's what we're not sure of because we haven't really gotten a layman's terms kind of map. So even the Hardin County Soil and Water Commissioners voted to object to this pipeline path because of the vagueness of its route. And uh, my tenant and I both are not really able to understand where their proposed path would precisely go. Okay, can you see the map that's on the screen? Yes. Okay, and that white line, more or less vertical through your property, is what the summit says is their pipeline route. Is that your understanding of where the route would be? Well, I, I think they've changed it since our first conversations. I'm, uh, yeah, I mean... I guess that looks like what they want to do. Okay. 
So using this map, where would the bioreactors be? There is one in, it could be right where it's going across the creek there. The uh, right south edge of your property? Yeah, but it would be on the north side of the creek is where oh. the bioreactor is. There's one also up to the, uh, in the west part as well. The farther north, but to the west? Yes. But I think the, the one that they would, that the Soil and Water Commission is concerned most about is the one where their pipeline goes through there. Uh, the one that's by the creek? Yes, because okay. they, they're not sure if it is going to disturb their easement. I, I, I guess I'm not sure why the Soil and Water Conservation District would have any easement for bioreactors. Can you explain that to us? Oh, it's not the conservation. It's the um, Soil and Water Commission, uh, Commission, I guess it's called. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's not the con conservation. No, they are in charge of the bioreactors. Okay. Um, well, is it your understanding that the pipeline, if it's constructed, would impact those reactors? It possibly. We d we're not sure because, uh, like I said, we we can't really tell from the maps they've given us. They're not like with Google. They're like survey maps. So even people like my uh, tenant, who I thought he would understand them better than I do, he wasn't quite sure where okay. they were um, So what, what contacts have you had with any land agents or representatives of Summit regarding your property? Well, they first called me about two years ago, and um, it was very, they were very chatty, you know, trying to tell me how much they enjoyed the area where I actually live in the Northwest and uh, very uh, friendly. Uh, but then when it got to the subject of this pipeline, they were saying, uh, you need to uh, go ahead and uh, sign an easement because it's, it's a done deal. Uh, we're going to eminent domain. You, you don't have a choice. Did they tell you that more than once? Oh, yes. Several different agents. They changed agents many times. Um, ones would fall away, and then we'd get a new one. And uh, I think it was the second one that actually met with my tenant on the land and uh, talked about the pathway. And my uh, tenant said at that point that the proposed path was a very bad idea because it was going kind of in the, um, if you go left uh, or uh, west of yes, okay. the route you see here to where the creek is, you know, if you go in the cropland, there's a, an overlook point on the other side of the creek to the south that would make a perfect place to build a home, which there was originally a house there, and I've thought about building a house there. Uh, and that's where originally they had it going, but it's like a higher overlook point over the creek, and it is it would just not make sense because of the topography. And the agent at that time admitted to my tenant that they hadn't really done any topographical studies when they made this route and agreed, the agent agreed that it should indeed be moved to where it is now, uh, which was my tenant's suggestion. Um, do you know if Summit has done any surveys for um, geological, archaeological, uh, environmental studies? 
I don't know because since I'm a long distance landowner, I can't tell if they've actually been on the land at a certain point. I, I said I did not want them to do any surveys on my property, but I don't know if they did or not since I, my tenant can get monitored all the time since he doesn't live there. Um, but I do have archaeological sites uh, registered on my land. I have four different ones that are from the um, peoples that lived in uh, 2000 to 1500 BC uh, that were probably camp or work sites for those peoples. And so that's another thing that concerns me of disturbing those places. Uh, do you know where those would be in relationship to the pipeline route? I'm not sure. Uh, I, I'm not sure if they actually would cross those in where they are now, but my understanding is that they can change their path at any time um, since they're not fixed in the easement contract. Did you ever talk with any summit representative about uh, an alternative route? Uh, just the one my tenant recommended, and then in my test, uh, my pre-file testimony, I did propose going farther to the east along the boundary of my property, the east boundary, since it wouldn't disturb the cropland. <laughs> because the crossing of Beaver Creek is very concerning to me. Um, I just, since in my long-term goal is to do more uh, native habitat, plant more native trees all along the creek, and uh, since we have a really diverse wildlife along the creek, I would love to make it more of a sanctuary for wildlife in the areas that aren't cropland. And I'm afraid that it, this easement will prevent me from, you know, doing any kind of tree planting or anything that is good for the climate, which is really my goal, to um, make it a more sustainable, ecologically diverse land. So you would plan to expand the natural area on your land in addition to preserving what you already have? Yes. Yes. And actually make it the wildlife sanctuary. Okay. Um, I mean, not just not getting rid of all the cropland, but, you know, the parts that are less productive. You know, I have some CRP as it is, and uh, just doing more to bring it back more to the native uh, way. Do you know whether or not, uh, if, if the pipeline were constructed, that that would um, adversely affect your CRP land or your your uh, uh, qualification for CRP? That is a concern, yes, as well as my wetland, which I believe where the path is now goes through the wetland as well as along a fence line, going along the fence line, not crossing the fence line. And my tenant also asked about uh, what they would do to repair any fence destroyed. And what he, the agent sent back was just some verbiage about uh, compensating for crossing or the technical things they would do to repair crossed fence, but we never got any clear answer about uh, rebuilding a whole fence that they would have to remove. Okay. And that also is important for the pasture because that's the fence that would contain the cattle that my um, tenant brings in. And it's also what the wetland is also there, the pasture and the wetland. And yeah, my concern with that too is that wetland is not a good place for a pipeline. It's not stable ground. My soil tends to be generally sandy, which it's, you know, the safety, the hazard of this pipeline is of the biggest concern. And um, just that 
we have no ability to get liability insurance for this. It's it just is so com- complex with fraught with terrible <laughs> scenarios. Okay. Um, where is the wetland in relationship to the pipeline road? Near the creek. It uh, is just to the north side of the creek there. If you look at the bottom. Okay. Um. Yeah, uh, keep going up with your curse with your arrow. Yeah, a little higher on the other side of the creek, up where the pipeline is. Okay. Up right. onto the uh, north side of the creek there. Okay. Um. Uh. If we can zoom out a little bit, it looks like there might be some occupied structures, at least fairly close. Um, is that true? I'm not sure about. I I don't really know my neighbors. I I we have a structure that's more of a cattle shed, um, machine shed. Okay. That's by farm entrance. If you go over to the east, uh, southeast, yeah, right there. Uh, yes. So that's a cattle shed? Yes. And are there cattle in there? No, not uh, generally. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. That's all the questions I have. Others may have some questions for you. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Coles. Good afternoon, Ms. Hunt. Good oh, morning. Jean Coles. I'm also a landowner. Um, I just have a couple of uh, questions. Uh, what what creek again? What was the name of that creek that runs through where the pipeline is going? Beaver Creek. Isn't it prone to seasonal flooding? Um, yes, I think so. Yeah. And we, have a, we do have a real problem with erosion on that creek, and we haven't been able to get a good answer about any repairs to damaging the creek bed or the banks and my tenant asked about you know rip wrap and things that that would uh stabilize it after the a pipeline were built and we never got answers about that so you're you're concerned about damage to the pipeline if it's installed because of seasonal flooding it could wash away around the pipeline yeah, I, I, yeah, and to the the creek itself, and all the native, uh, the wildlife that lives in that creek. To me, that's a great concern. Are you concerned about the erosion that you would have around the pipeline too? Absolutely, yeah, and that's what they didn't really address when we questioned them about the repairs they would do to the banks. Uh, Generally, they we use uh, rip wrap to stabilize that, or boulders, and uh, you know they didn't commit to any kind of erosion control repair there. Thank you. No further questions. Thank you, uh, Mr. Dublinsky. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Hunt, just a couple of uh, follow-up questions. You had re- you received the exhibit H's that were filed in this docket for your parcels, correct? Yes, I have. And, and, and then also received them. And you had mentioned some uncertainty about the route. Are you aware mm-hmm. that if the board approves the application with those exhibit H's that the route uh, has to be as shown on those exhibit H's. Uh, I wasn't aware of that, but uh, my understanding is that they have full access to my property anywhere on the property at any time, which mm-hmm. to me feels like it would be a great invasion of privacy and it would you know, damage a lot of what we have established there. And then you raised an issue about repair of fences. Are you aware that the agricultural impact mitigation plan that Summit filed requires them to repair 
uh, any fences that are damaged by the pipeline construction? Yes, I understand that is written. I just don't trust that they would, you know, maybe they would say that they didn't do that particular damage. And it just seems a little vague the way it's, I, I received something from one of the agents that was their uh, verbiage about it and it, it just didn't seem reassuring. And then finally, I know you expressed um, some concern about the creek. Are you aware that the pipeline will be bored uh, under the creek bed and actually that bore then extends to the other side of the road? So the pipeline will be bored under the creek, under the road, and then uh, come back uh, on the other side. Okay, good to know. We, we had not heard that. Right. I have nothing further, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Jordan, for redirect. Yes, thank you. So these bioreactors, I just want to be clear, that's to help um, diminish nitrates that run off into the river. Is that the thought process there? That's correct, yes. And did you install those personally, or did the county do that, or, or did you pay uh, for that? I worked with the FSA and the uh, South Fork Watershed Alliance, and we had received some funding to establish those. Okay, very good. So along the lines of the goal of being as good a steward to the land as you possibly can. Absolutely. Yes, I'm always working with the FSA to see what can be done to make it a more sustainable farm. And uh, right now we're waiting for some uh, funding to do some grass waterways and that's another thing we're worried that this pipeline might prevent us from doing some of that mitigation that uh, a spot where water drains into the cropland and causes erosion in the northern part of the map there um, and we're afraid that we won't be able to and put that grass waterway above the pipeline path. And, and so, in, in essence, the worries that the, the pipeline, its existence, its operation and construction would be inconsistent with, um, over the years, how you've spent time and money preparing your uh, property to be as, mo as natural as it can be. Yes, absolutely. I feel like the soil will be damaged and it takes decades for the soil structure to be reestablished. Even if they say they're going to put it back together, there's things they they can't repair, like the microbiome in the soil that is those uh, mushroom-like things that are so necessary for healthy crops. And uh, we do no-till. Uh, yeah, we've done, you know, just try to do everything we can to, you know, help toward the climate issue, which they claim, some it claims to be doing something for, but as many landowners have pointed out before my own testimony, um, it's just very negligible what kind of impact it would make a long-term um, and I noticed on page 251 of your pre-filed testimony, you uh, put forth a proposed least worse um, alternative in terms of a reroute. Do you Has someone ever talked to you or said why they could not route the pipeline along your eastern boundary, north-south on your eastern boundary? No, they haven't. All right, and you, you notice how the, the proposed route comes into your property uh, and then it angles up on the north side and then keeps angling east. So would, would you, um, is it your request that if this were to be approved that the pipeline route be located hugging your eastern boundary? Yes, that would be beneficial for us. But I, I don't wish the pipeline on anybody. But uh, another concern is that the if there were a uh, rupture on my land, it's I'm very close to the uh, boys' training school that's uh, east 
it's not far. It's like less, less than a mile from my land. Um, and then a little farther east than that is Eldora. Um, and yeah, the liability concerns me just then suffering and injury to life and livestock and the land, the soil, the water. It's just horrifying. When you referenced the Iowa State uh, training, <clears throat> pardon me, training school for the boys, for the record, what goes on there? Um, it's a uh, school for juvenile. Uh, I, I don't really know so much about it. I, my grandmother used to work there, um, but I know there's, you know, people there, quite a few people there, you know, during the daytime, and I'm not sure if they live there or not. I haven't researched that, but I know that should be of, of concern. All right, very good. I, I don't have anything further, ma'am. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you, Ms. Hunt. You are excused. All right, that brings us to noon exactly. So we will be off the record for about an hour uh, for lunch, and then we will be back with, are we, are we staying on the same schedule? Okay, great. Correct. R <coughs> Rhonda Aikman would be next virtual. Excellent. All right, well, we will see everybody in about an hour. Thank you.